the former White House press secretary, Sean Spicer. He's also senior advisor at America First PAC. Good morning to you, Sean. Good of you to be here. So first Welcome off, good morning. What, what do you expect from this when we eventually do hear from, from Cohen? Well, I don't know. I mean, it's, it seems like uh, he's changed his story multiple times in terms of his defense of the president. Now he wants to clear his conscience, quote unquote. Uh, so it'll be interesting to see which Michael Cohen shows up. He's told various different stories over the last year and a half. And, uh, and I think there's no question that not only his integrity, but his recollection of the, of the facts is in question. Uh, Cummings has a lot of power. Oversight committee, he can, he, he can subpoena you to death if, 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 if that's the case, or request documents, et cetera. CBS reports that they've sent 51 letters to government officials, Trump Organization, the White House looking for documents uh, relating to all kinds of things like aircraft by cabinet members to uh, flow of foreign money into the Trump enterprise like the hotel in Washington, D.C. I'm quoting here from CBS. Is this going to be what, what the White House would consider presidential harassment? Is that what's coming? Is that what is coming here from Cummings and others? Look, there's this balance, right? Every party does it to the other party when, when they're, they're of different sides. Um, Republicans did it to Democrats. Democrats did it to Republicans. We did it to Clinton and Obama. They did it to Bush, and now they'll do it to Trump. Uh, part of it is politics. They need to satisfy their base. They need to show them that they're exhibiting oversight. But part of it is policy. I mean, there is a role of congressional oversight. What I would argue, though, is that with everything happening that the, under the president's watch, just last month you saw 312,000 jobs grow. You've seen 2018, 2.6 uh, million payroll jobs, the highest since 2015. There's a lot of good going on. Businesses are growing. Manufacturing's on the rise. A lot of positive things are happening to the American workforce. And what we don't want to do is stifle that through this. And so they have a role. There's no question about it. And they have every right uh, to go look at these different agencies. But there's a difference between political witch hunts and, and uh, the, the proper constitutional oversight of policy. Uh, so let's not overlook all the good things that are happening uh, to this country under the president's watch and the policies that he's advocated for and gotten into office, uh, since he's gotten in office. So we, we've got to be very careful. And like I said, there's the politics part of this where, where Chairman Cummings is trying to do things to make sure that his base sees them being aggressive towards the Trump administration. But then there's the policy piece. And where that tipping point is, is doing things that undermine all of the good that the president has been able to accomplish. You know, it, it's some of the things that Elijah Cummings had to say there, um, he thinks Trump's making a lot of money off this job. Uh, when the right. president's making a deal, whether he's making it, making it his self-interest or that of the country, what did you think when well, you heard that? Well, look, and, and I, that's, that's a really cheap shot for him to say. I mean, the president has donated his salary every quarter since he was in office to fulfill a campaign pledge. He divested from his, com from his company, uh, is letting his sons run it. So the president was, a, was very well off when he ran for, for, for this office. And unlike a lot of politicians, he ran for it. He probably could be making a heck of a lot of more money outside of government than inside of government. But he's doing it because he cares about the country and he wants to give back. So uh, I, I think that, again, we've got to be very careful with, with the accusations that we throw around uh, and what's happening. You've got, uh, as, as Congressman King talked about the last second, 30 Democratic hanging out on the beach, and yet those are members of his party, probably some of the members of his committee. So he's got to be a little careful about the kind of th the words and, and terms that he throws around if he wants to get into this business. Sean, we're just getting a uh, couple of headlines that Bill Barr apparently is going to talk about tomorrow. Now, Lindsey Graham was on the air on Sunday saying that he has his very specific questions. You know, is Barr going to protect the Mueller investigation, et cetera? Um, how do you think this hearing goes? And is Bill Barr the next attorney general? Well, there's no question he's next attorney general. Republicans have 53 seats in the Senate, picked up two from last election, meaning that now they actually have to lose three. I don't see any of that happening. Bill Barr uh, was previously the attorney general. Almost every Democrat that time confirmed him, voted to confirm him. He's got a stellar reputation. Um, and, and I think he understands because he's held the job before and he's in, held in such high esteem by his uh, by the legal community, that there's no question that he's going to, that he understands not only the job, but the current political environment. Um, I, I see this as sort of, again, more of a political test where you're going to have all of these 
you know, 300 plus people who are running for president on the Democratic side tried to make issues out of nothing and vote against him purely to appease their own base. But at the end of the day, he is a highly qualified candidate for attorney general. He will be confirmed and we will move forward. On the written testimony that we're starting to see some pieces of talking about the special counsel being able to complete his work, this is obviously going to be a big question that comes up this week. He said, I will follow the special counsel regulations scrupulously and in good faith. And on my watch, Bob will be allowed to complete his work. I'm sure before we even had those words, that's what you would tell us your expectation was, Sean. Final thoughts. Absolutely. Not only that, but I think that to some degree this is a false, a, a straw man argument. The president has never, you know, th there is no evidence that he has threatened to, to fire Mueller. And so all you're seeing is a consistent, all we want on the Republican side is wrap this thing up. We're two years in. There's been no evidence of collusion, which was at the nut of why this thing happened. So let's put our cards on the table, wrap it up. Uh, and I think that that's exactly what the attorney general nominee is going to say. Thank you, Sean. He, he's also going to say, Rebecca. quote, the president sought no assurances, promises, or commitments from me of any kind, either expressed or implied, and I have not given him any, end quote from Bill Barr. Thank you, Sean. It's good to have you back here. You bet, guys. Thanks, Sean, Sean Spicer with us today. Thank you. Got some breaking news.